Hi guys, thank you for coming to my video today. I put a lot of work into this. I can't wait to make an even more in-depth video where I go into everything and I can actually give live examples as I go. That'll be coming soon. I need some sleep first. <laughs> but thank you so much for showing up today. Thanks for interacting with this at all. I really hope that it's uh, helpful in any measure. Um, please enjoy. So I'm going to go over this one pretty quick today. I just want to have this straight to the point, nice and easy, and then all the good stuff, all the in-depth stuff will be on the other one. This is just right the meat and potatoes of everything, all right? Okay, so I'm going to go over things like unit types, armor types, HP values on each difficulty, behavior, uh, strategies to uh, generally interact with these, these enemies um, live in the field. Okay. For unit types, we have things from Horde, Infested, Roamer, Normal, to Elites, uh, Ragers, Specials, Monsters, Unyielding, and there's a Captain in there as well. So what these unit type names mean are, like, generally speaking, what this unit is going to be doing. So if you look at the Hordes, they're just going to be mass, cheap chaff. They're just going to run at you. That's about it. They're not, they're not going to do much. They can smack you with their hands. That's about it. Then you get into things like uh, elites, for example, and those guys are, are a lot more tougher. They're usually armored up. They have some extra weapons. They definitely cause a little bit more concern than the average horde unit. So then we have um, specials, and these guys are kings of disruption. They are going to try to single you out, get you away from the team, disrupt everything, cause chaos, gank you while you're on your own. These guys are filthy. They're scary. They have very specialized roles and they are very dedicated to the, the specific thing that they do. They don't really push out of that comfort zone too much, right? Monsters, Captain, these are boss type enemies. They're going to be very huge or very cool and have some pretty neat abilities. They're going to be um, very hard to take care of. Like uh, when they show up, your whole team kind of has to focus on them or, or at least if you have a specialized guy who knows what he's doing or lady, they can rock it while the rest of the team focuses on specials and just normal horde enemies. Anyway, moving on. So let's look at armor types. These are different unit classifications based on the equipment or state that they are in, which affect damage mitigation. So what this means is the damage that you inflict on these units will be reduced to a certain amount based on what they have going on with them. So they can have certain types of like Nurgle corruption, like being resilient or resistant or mutant. Then if you look at the normal human renegade type enemies, they're usually a little bit more armored. Uh, and if they are unarmored, they're, they're a little bit weaker than those with the Nurgle blessing. I think most often you're going to encounter the unarmored horde enemies and then the, the mixed armor uh, enemies. They have unarmored and flak or flak and carapace. Carapace is like a super armor. If you played Vermintide 2 before, it's going to be similar to the, the Chaos Warriors. They, can, they were considered super armor as opposed to other units just having armor. All right, it's time for the cards. Let's get it. I'm excited to show you guys. I've been working on this, like I said, wah, wah, wah. Let's do it. So let's get into the information here. Uh, you have the name and the grouping at the top. You have a nice picture, a little profile picture of each kind of unit. Beside the unit pictures, you're going to see the armor diagrams. So these are color coded and on the humanoid image, you're going to see where each armor piece is located if they have it equipped. Beside that, you see all of the stats. Okay, so we have the difficulty settings, sedition, uprising, malice, heresy, and damnation, with the max health values respectively located underneath each title. Listed below the health section, you'll find the unit, armor, and weapon types. I've already gone over the unit and armor types. The weapons, this will be uh, melee or ranged essentially. The indicator is the audio or visual cue that you are presented with in order to recognize this enemy in the field. Uh, the weak spot, you're usually always going to see it be the head, but there are a couple other enemies that have separate weak points, or at least a better way of approaching. Uh, the hit mass is how well you can cleave through it, how thick that boy is. Uh, stagger resistance and reduction, this is going to be how hard they are to push, and then how much flat just reduction they have to the incoming stagger. Uh, behavior listed below that, that is how these enemies tend to act. If they're going to run up close, if they're going to run away, 
Uh, success strategies next. So this is a tip and strategy kind of section to give you a generalized idea of how to interact with these enemies in a way that should result in success. And then to the right of the page at the top, you're going to see, if applicable, the uh, audio cue or sound that that character makes that you will need to listen for uh, in a match. So first, we have Groaners. Okay, they're your um, most basic horde unit. They're unarmored. They spawn in masses with uh, the, to the sound of the, the horde event cue. And this will happen periodically throughout your matches. This is this cue will let you know that both the groaners and the poxwalkers are coming at you. The uh, poxwalker is also infested, so what this means is it is going to cause corruption damage when it deals melee damage to you. And I've been asked by a few people uh, if um, if they still continue to corrupt if you're like standing around them and they're dead because they might leave pools of corruption or something like that, and they don't. I'll, I'll show you that in the in-depth video. I have live examples of everything that I'm going to explain to you guys today. So an indicator is, uh, you're going to see them. They're very tall. They're a little bit taller than the normal Groaners. They have the same mob event audio cue as the Groaners, which is also located beside here. I'll play that again. Okay, so their weak spot is their head. Most, most all enemies actually, at like almost every single enemy you're, you're going to see here, the weak spot is the head. Okay, hit mass is 1, stagger resistance 0 0.75, and the reduction is nada. So he's just got a little bit of stagger resistance, and that is it. Behavior, rush to melee, same with the groaner. They're just going to run right at you and try to smack you around. That, that, that's about it. Success strategy, you're going to want AoE damage. Any damage is fine as the, in, with these guys, but uh, since they come at you en masse, uh, I would recommend any kind of super cleave or AoE damage. Don't waste grenades on them unless you need to, because you're, they're just going to come over and over and over again. They're going to spawn probably two or three times each event. So I just, uh, you know, if you have a lawnmower, go for it. Bring it. Go to town. After the horde minions, we get into the soldier types. So these boys are very uh, versatile, actually. They have a few different classifications. Uh, they have a melee version, they have a ranged version, they have both scab and dreg versions. Okay, so scab and dreg are the two different types of races outside of chaos that we have access to in this game. Scab are the Mobian Six Force units. Okay, so if you like lore, check that out look it up mobian six okay so these guys they they like chaos they've devoted to chaos but they're not all nurgled up okay they're still pretty human they like their armor and you're not going to see much infected or any kind of innate resistance that doesn't come from anything but the metal on their bodies the dreg are more cultist plagued up kind of filthy nasty boys they don't really like armor too much they do have access to it you do see them in some flak armor okay but they like their yellow regs they like not brushing their hair they like being filthy okay they're, they're nasty uh we're gonna get to those more in depth in a little bit here we're gonna get back up to the scab bruiser we're gonna go over that first so if you look at the health values in different difficulties as you'll see with each one the values go up incrementally for each difficulty you're going to see um, normal roamer for the unit type. Roamer just means the same thing. He's just going to cruise around the map. He's going to be in his own little little homies, little clicks, and uh, you're going to want to run up to him and ruin their day kind of thing. He's going to charge at you when he sees you because he doesn't like you in his house. Uh, visual, you're going to see him. Weak spot is the head. Hit mass of 2. Stagger resistance 1. Reduction NA. Behavior. Brush to melee. Success strategy. Just any kind of damage, he's going to come at you. As long as you're armor piercing, even if you don't have armor piercing, you're going to knock him around a bit. It's fine. So then we get into the, stab, the scab stalker. This guy has a little bit of range. He's got that heavy Laz pistol. Okay, and if you get close enough, he's going to switch to a melee weapon. So he's another normal roamer. You see his health values here. 117 in sedition all the way up to 360 in damnation. He's not as tanky as the scab bruiser. But it's essentially the same, really, especially when comparative or compared to the other enemies. 
So weapon type, as I said, close range and melee. Indicator is visual. Uh, you, you see him just fine right there. That's all you got to look for. Uh, and gener a general rule of thumb is if a unit has a ranged weapon, when they target and go to shoot you on that initial shot, you're going to notice it most. That's going to be the most important one to see. There's a very light red muzzle flash before they shoot. It's almost like they are locking on with a laser scope that you don't really see. So keep an eye out for that, and that's how you're going to know that they are coming at you, or, or going to shoot you. Damage incoming. So weak spot, head, uh, the face a little bit, because obviously he's got a flak helmet. Uh, the face is uncovered, it's just a cloth. Head mass is 125, stagger resistance 15, reduction nada. So he's got a little bit of resistance, but there's no added stagger resistance, um, like reduction. You got the resistance, that means you're you're kind of innately hard to push around to a certain level, and then there's the reduction, which means like a hard mitigation to the type of stagger that is incoming. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the success strategy here is to disrupt the ranged attack. So, like, you're not going to have to worry about him too much if he pulls out his melee weapon. I think that's going to be the happy zone for anybody if you're not able to just take him out at range before he even he's even able to shoot you, okay? So, if you're not able to do that, uh, you're going to want to disrupt his ranged attack so he can't shoot you. Uh, you're going to want to push him, you want to, you want to want to stagger him if you get a grenade or whatever and that's that last hit and you're really worried about taking that little poke damage. Yeah, do what you can to disrupt him so he can't shoot you. Get into melee so that he puts his ranged weapon away and then you can just block his hits and smack him till the cows come home. All right? Very good. Moving on. We have the drag versions of these same units. So the drag bruiser, not much different essentially all the same stuff uh, unarmored he's got a flak helm though so be careful with that it is his weak spot is his head but he is more armored you're going to encounter this a few times like with the mauler for example he has a super armor carapace helmet and his weak spot is his head but you do more damage to him elsewhere uh, so go figure, right? You gotta you gotta kind of pay attention to that kind of stuff. Not too much, you know. So all right, he's got 1.5 hit mass, uh, one stagger resistance, no reduction. He's just a rush to your face melee kind of dude. He's any kind of damage is just gonna be fine against him. It doesn't really matter. Uh, then we have the drag stalker. As you can see. His entire diagram shows that he's unarmored. You can see a lot of clothes on him, so it might be kind of iffy. But no, he's just unarmored. He's just cloth. He's just a clothy boy. Weapon type, close range and melee. The same thing uh, for the success strategy. You want to disrupt his range attack if you don't want to get hit by him or if you don't have enough toughness. And then we have proximity listed here. So this is where his, um, da his ranged weapon is going to be a little bit more concerning than that, uh, that heavy pistol. And it's a little bit more important to either take care of him before he can shoot you or get into a melee range so that he puts it away and then he just goes into, you know, just trying to smack you a little bit, which is completely fine and totally manageable, okay? So then we have the soldier, the scab shooter. This is what your characters refer to as the ranger. These guys are really cool. This is the closest you get to the Mobian 6, boys. I love that mask. They got a cool las gun. They got a cool bayonet. They're pretty dope, all right? Uh, they're flak and unarmored. Most of the time you're going to hit flak. There still is unarmored, though. You can see on his uh, legs and a little bit of his arms. They're going to be uh, unarmored spots. The rest is flak. Okay, so he attacks from range. Uh, he's going to want to shoot you from afar. And if you get close, he'll stop shooting, obviously. But he's going to poke you with his little bayonet. And uh, that's not so much to worry about. But uh, they can do a lot of damage from range. These guys, you can, see, you can find them uh, rolling around in patrols, even. And, yeah, like a bunch of them together across a distance that is too far for you to run to cover at it can be a massive problem massive problem the harder the difficulty the more threat those ranged weapons are okay filthy uh, next we have the elite scab mauler we're getting into the elite group now this is where Mon or the enemies start getting a little bit tougher a little bit more specialized uh, they have a little bit scarier weapons so if you look at the armor diagram here he's got carapace armor helmet which is nasty you're not going to get through that just don't go for his head really like ever even though it is his weak spot rest of his armor is all flak all flak armor uh, so he is melee, he has a two-handed weapon, it's easy to notice him, he's just big, got this big chonky chain axe, and uh, your character is even going to call them out. So, starting with the ranger and moving forward, 
Um, you're going to see, you're, you're going to hear your own characters or your teammate kind of their own voice lines. Oh, there's an elite, uh, there's a scab mauler ahead, you know, that whole kind of thing, right? They're not going to call out elite, but they'll, they'll definitely call out mauler or a certain special. Uh, so the health, if you'll see a, a massive boost here. If you look at Sedition, it's 900 max health. That's more than twice the health of the highest health enemy that we've seen yet. Okay, and then in Damnation, that goes all the way up to 1800 health. That's a lot, right? So your pimple popper, your head popper for the Psyker, that's generally probably the best way for you to test flat damage on things. And you're going to need more than one of those to kill this mauler in almost any difficulty. Most difficulties. Okay, so he's got a hit mass of 20. He's a big bulky boy. He's got a lot of armor. You're not going to cleave through him. That's what hit mass is. Hit mass is how much meat and chunk you have that'll stop a weapon from slicing through it. Okay, so you're not going to be able to slice through this guy much at all. If there's if he's in a horde, you're going to be able to slice through the first couple horde units, and then your weapon is just going to clunk, stop on that guy. Okay. So he's just going to rush you straight in melee. He's got uh, stagger resistance of 1 and a reduction of 10. So he's he can, he can kind of be pushed around. He's got a little bit of reduction. It's a little it's definitely harder than any other unit before, but not as hard as most all other units coming after. So the strategy here, he's big, he's bulky, does a lot of damage. What you're going to want to do is just dodge. You're going to want to take the aggro and just dodge a little bit. If you're unable to deal the damage to him before you reach him, once he becomes a problem, then the success strategy is to dodge, get some distance, take the aggro so your team can take him, make sure you have some armor-piercing damage, okay? Next we have the scab gunner. This is a long-ranged, mostly flak-armored enemy. So this guy has a push, he has a kick. He's going to try to keep as much range between you and him as possible. If you look at his behavior, I have attacks from range there. Typically these guys like to run away when you get close and get a better vantage point. That can actually be an opening. So a success strategy here is obviously take him out before you can get to him. But if you are in that gray area and you, you can't take him out at range, you know he's going to come at you with, with attacks. The next best thing is to get in that proximity because you're going to force him to either put his gun down and push you or run away to find a new spot to shoot you at and that is a perfect time to unload if he turns around and starts running that's a lot of animation lock for him to have to turn around once he reaches his destination lock his gun pull it up that's perfect amount of time to take him out just so long as you don't chase him too far away from your team or into a horde where you're in trouble that whole kind of thing right <laughs> so head is a weak spot hit mass four you're not going to really cleave most of these enemies that we're going to see uh, other than the horde enemies you're not really too worried about cleaving through them uh like you're gonna want more heavy damage if if your heavy attack it happens to be your cleave weapon or your cleave attack in the sequence then that's fine as long as you're using your heavy attacks that uh, have your best armor piercing you're gonna do fine against this guy so then the elite dreg gunner this is essentially the equivalent just like we're seeing you know there's there's a scab and dreg equivalent of most of these boys so this guy has a little bit of a health difference. He has uh, that Nurgle kind of blessing a little bit. Most of the, all, well, the Dreg boys do because they are cultists. Uh, so his, diff his health is going to differ from the normal Scab Gunner. You see that in 450 Sedition for the Scab, 525 for the Elite. And then it goes up to 900 Damnation for the Scab and 1050 Damnation for the Dreg. He's got Flak and Unarmored. I have the uh, smaller than symbol going to Flak because he's mostly unarmored. Smack him around a bunch, you're, you're just pretty much hitting Unarmored everywhere unless you shoot him in the chest or the shoulders. Weak spot is his head. He's got a higher hit mass than the Scab. His uh, behavior is the exact same thing as the Scab's, exact same thing as Success Strategy. Uh, these guys, the visual indicator, you're going to see the glow on their masks. You're going to see the bullet fire from them. There's rapid bullet fire. It's going to be easily discernible from any other fire. The Dreg Gunner shoots bullets. The Scab Gunner shoots lasers. The laser gun is going to be the easier to see, obviously. Next, we have the Scab Shotgunners, both Scab and then Dreg next. So I'm going to go over them both at the same time just to keep this all quick. These guys have the same health values despite the Dreg and Scab. Uh, they're both flak and unarmored. They both have ranged and melee abilities. They both have spikes. That's going to be your best visual indicator. Apart from the skulls, you're going to notice their silhouette compared to the other uh, lower class minions. You, you, these will be a little bit more noticeable than the other ones. 
So if you look at the success strategy, it's not going to change too much from what we've seen before. Disrupt range, proximity, armor piercing. So they have shotguns, they're going to shoot you. They have melee weapons when you get close. So if, they're, if you don't want them shooting at you, shoot them first. Or if you're close enough, get them to pull out their melee weapons and then handle them that way. Make sure you bring armor piercing. They're all armored up. Next we have the Dreg Rager. These guys are nuts. They are mad. They are frothing at the mouth. They are just brutal boys. Okay, so your visual is going to be green vials on the Dreg and absolute mad armor on the Scab. They both have dual wield. Uh, the Scab has a lot more impactful hits because like, he's usually got the mace and that kind of thing. I find that he breaks through my block a lot more. The Drag Rager, on the other hand, I feel like I can take his hits a lot more without them busting through my toughness or staggering me too much. Uh, so he's just going to rush right at your face. He's going to start off with an attack, follow up with dual wield swing attacks. They just do massive damage. It's really hard to counter stagger them, especially if you were the one target targeted. So the thing that you want to do here is just hope for a teammate, take the aggro, if you have it, block and dodge, use some armor piercing, teammate's going to get you, get it for you. Um, or if you if you do manage to get enough distance, if you drop off a ledge, if you time those dodges well enough, and you lock these guys into the slowness of their attack animations, then you can kind of squeeze in an attack here or there, or, or hopefully have something that'll super stagger them, and then you can just kind of stagger lock them until they die, okay? Uh, they have quite a bit of health, the same amount of, for each, 675 Sedition, 1350 Damnation. Alright, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. We're popping into the special group now. These guys are very specialized, hence the name. They're very dedicated into their own specific roles. So basically what these guys are going to do, they are masters of disruption. They want to cause chaos. They want to completely throw your team around, cut you off pick on you when you're alone, that kind of thing. They want, they just wish all heck on you. So these flamers, they're ragers and specials. They're maniacs. They have flak and unarmored. They're both close ranged and they have like a kick or a push that they'll use if you do get too close. As far as the uh, visual cues go, you're going to see the flames on their guns. Uh, the the Dreg Tox Flamer has a green glow to his weapon, and the Scab Flamer has a fiery little pilot light at the end of his gun. Uh, so then, character call out. You're going to have your characters call out when they get into close range, and then they have audio cues. Both of them have unique voice lines and gun noises. They share the same gun noise, actually, um, but they have very different voices. The Scab is a male, and the Dreg is a female. Uh, those are somewhat audibly discernible. Anyway, so here are some audio cue examples. All right, so let's look at health values. Uh, 488, 600, 750, 1125, and 1500 for both of them in all respective difficulties. We have uh, Maniac armor type, they're also maniacs, yes, just like the ragers, and uh, they're unarmored, and then the scab is always, they usually always, they have flak, okay? Weak spots, the head. These guys aren't just, or they aren't like the flamers in Vermintide, <laughs> right? The fire rat, you like shooting the thing in the back and blowing them up. Little mini nukes, I loved it. Maybe you didn't, maybe you were the teammate that it blew up on. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. You can't do that in this game. I think the armor's too good. It just doesn't work. I've tried it. I'll show you live clips in the uh, in-depth video that I'll be coming out with soon. Uh, so these guys are going to... They're going to activate their audio cues. They're going to run in close to you, typically from behind. Uh, shout out to Chris for that information. He wanted me to throw that in there, so I'm throwing that in there. And uh, essentially, they're just going to unload their fire onto you. They just, they just want to burn everything. They want to see it all on flame. Uh, stagger resistance 1, 0 0.5. They can kind of be pushed around. They're very vulnerable to melee. So then, success strategy is disrupt ranged and aggro. Essentially, if you have no choice but to take the flame, dodge if you can, hide behind cover, your teammates will get to him. If he's shooting at one enemy, he can't do <laughs> about anybody else around him, right? Excuse my language. Okay. 
here we have the trapper this guy is pretty cool I, I actually don't mind him i don't mind him his mask just it makes me think of like a little puppy dog or something i don't know i don't know it's where the arrow goes down and it's those like big lip whisker pouch things i don't know without the whiskers i don't know maybe i'm weird i don't think that's a maybe but let's get into it sedition he's got 293 health it's not a flat value like most of the other values uh why the three is there don't ask me i don't know i tested a lot that's what i got every time okay uh damnation it evens out at 900 he's a rager and a special armor type is maniac uh you see a lot of flak armor on him but every, everywhere you hit him is maniac uh trust me I'll, so i'll have that also as i've said before in the in the in-depth video um he's close ranged he's going to make his audio cue and then actually sorry it's female yeah it's a it's a female so she is going to make her audio cue and then she's going to actually she has like this heavy breathing kind of thing that she does while she's like huffing and puffing <laughs> hoofing her feet over to get you but uh, she'll make a she'll make a distinct noise she'll do the breathing sound and then when she comes close to you um those vermintide fans out there those leeches when those leeches spawned close to you you heard the the sound they made it was like a teleport i'm here noise and you kind of got used to after three seconds well like 1.5 to three seconds depending on how fast your brain actually counts things or how you considered it there would be the perfect spot to dodge you could be looking not at it you could be looking anywhere and as long as you counted that time perfectly after you heard that sound you were you were safe as long as you dodge you were safe right you can do pretty much the exact same thing with the scab trapper so what happens is you hear the initial sound she runs up to you and then you hear this like charge up noise and if you if you're looking at her while she does it she'll bring her gun from her hip to a 90 degree angle pointing at you and when you see it lock into that 90 degree it kind of sets and right at right then is where it, it starts doing that charge up activate sound so get used to recognizing when that actual charge up activate sound happens because then you can make the the proper time judgment call uh, for when you need to dodge so long as you're not immediately in front of the barrel you should be able to dodge no problem okay beautiful and if you do get caught don't worry you're not taking damage your teammates can just come pick you up it's not going to take as long as resurrecting you're just up ready to go right at it okay so these guys will uh they'll rush close and then if they actually if they miss they'll just run away and then try to come at you again right but they make a lot of noise it's it's kind of easy to figure out where they are <laughs> So let's move on to the bombers. These guys are pretty pretty nasty as well. Uh, they're very squishy though, very squishy, very very susceptible to melee. I don't even think they have a melee attack. Like if you if you stand in front of this guy and take a peek at him in the Cycanium, Cycanium, Cycanum, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> they, they they even all they even look like they have severe anxiety. Like he bit off his own nose because he was so anxious. Right? It's nuts. So like he will throw bombs from afar. He'll yell at you and stuff, and then he'll run away. If you get close, like most other units, they have like a push or a kick. But I think he literally just just runs. So he's gonna have an audio cue. Here it is. He's got flak armor, he's all range, uh, the indicator here is going to be the visual glow of his grenades and his grenade bandolier across his chest and on his hip. Uh, the audio cue you've just heard, there's a couple, he has that uh, voice call and then also the sounds of his grenades. Uh, his weak spot is his head, hit mass of 2, stagger resistance 1 and reduction of 20. You're not going to really have to worry about staggering, or staggering him too much, he's kind of squishy. so. Like I think on any difficulty you can just one shot him with the head popper from the psych from the psyker. Uh, so if you um, if you do run into this guy, the success strategy here is to disrupt his range attack, which is just his grenade throwing. Uh, if you if you do disrupt that, he's going to drop the grenade right at his feet, which is perfect, especially if it is a horde, uh, if there's a horde around him. Fantastic. 
So this is one of the enemies that uh, we don't know about yet. But there's hearsay that uh, the Dreg Tox Bomber is going to come out sometime. And these are the values I think he's going to have. Uh, or she. Or she. They're going to be fire and plague kind of goodness. Like the, the Pox. Or the, sorry, the Tox Flamer. Like they, they're audio cue as you heard they, the fire and talks mix or something like that right it'll be something similar i think I, i'm excited to see what it'll be like next we have the scab sniper uh this dude's really cool he's got that cool mask as you can see on the armor diagram he's got all on armor it doesn't matter where you're smacking it doesn't matter if it looks like he's got armor this is probably the squishiest non-horde unit in the game uh 163 health and sedition that's not much at all at all <laughs> damnation you got 500 that's not much either like it, it doesn't take much to take to, to take this guy down uh unit type is normal and special armor type is unarmored weapon type is all ranged he might have a little push when you get close but that's it uh, the indicator that you're going to see is the visual glow of the mask and the laser sight as well as your character calling him out I have managed to confirm that uh, he does have an audio cue when he is entering the area. This is the hardest to pick up out of every single special or audio cue in the game. It's a very, very soft jingle. It's like he has a set of like house keys on his hip. And every every couple steps he takes just jingles him a little bit. It's it's going to be hard to pick up. I don't know, but if you if you have acute hearing for those high pitches, you'll be able to pick it out. So here's an example. Hopefully you can get it. So his weak spot is his head. Hit mass two. Stagger resistance one. No extra reduction. His behavior is that he will attack from range, and when you get close, he'll do the retreat to a better position kind of thing. You want to disrupt his range so he doesn't snipe you. It does massive damage. And proximity helps because you're going to trigger him to either attack you or run. So then we have the Pox Hound. <laughs> this guy's gross. Oh, it's nasty. It is nasty. Uh, the Pox Hound is all infested according to the diagram. So that's a special kind of resistance to certain things. Uh, I'm not going to go into that this video because we want to be quick here. Uh, on the health values, he starts pretty healthy at 585 on Sedition and goes all the way up to 18, 1800 in Damnation. He's a resilient armor type, which is very unique, and I don't know a lot about it. I'll, I'll be straightforward with that. Uh, weapon type, he's going to pounce on you, and, he, and since he's infested, he does corruption damage. So uh, basically, he's going to give out an audio cue, which is a howl, and then he's going to bark, and you'll hear the click clack of his claws on the metal ground as he comes at you. Visually, you're going to see just the dog. He doesn't do anything special apart from run at you. Weak spot is his head, so when he gets close, he's going to pounce on you, and he tends to single out the person who is farthest away from the team. So what happens when he pounces on you is you are incapacitated completely, and corruption is going to build up and build up. So the only way to get out of that is by a teammate coming to help you and saving your butt. Uh, he has two hit mass, stagger resistance to two. I don't know about the reduction. Um, I'll, I'll be able to update that when I do. Uh, behavior is, uh, as I said, hunt specific target, incapacitates target, and builds corruption. Success strategy, you're going to want to dodge. Just keep an eye out for that, and then you can dodge at the right time, and then you'll be good. He'll dance around a little bit. He's really hard to hit once he gets kind of close and starts uh, freaking out. <laughs> Uh, but uh, if you have a Psyker just to lock onto him, do that head pop, it's fantastic. Two of them gets him every time. And now we get into the Ogren. These are the big, stompy, nasty Chunguses among us. <laughs> so this one is known as the Reaper, and this is where we first encounter the unyielding uh, unit type. So this guy has unyielding, which is technically unarmored, but just a souped up version of unarmored. He's got a carapace armor, um, forearm and foot set, as well as his gun. And then uh, it looks like flak armor at, in other places, but that's just, that's just unyielding, okay? Uh, well, he's got one shoulder guard, that's, uh, that's carapace as well. 
So then his max health at Sedition is 1876. He's quite tanky, quite healthy. Damnation is 3750. That's the most health we've seen yet at Damnation. Uh, so he is resistant, flak carapace, he ranged with a bash attack when you get close. The visual indicator is a big, massive, chonky body with a lot of fire coming at you. You're going to notice that twin-linked auto gun when it shoots. Uh, if you do get caught by that, be careful because it can immediately go right through that toughness. Like, it's gone instantly. And the suppression that you get when you take a lot of fire from these guys is so hindering so hindering so what we what we would say here for the success strategy is uh, if he's on you and you have aggro hide behind something or dodge out of the way and get behind something try to get that weak spot uh, for those quick pot shots and if you do have teammates while you have aggro or while they have aggro just lay into them So we have Bulwark, that's the next version of the Ogren. Uh, these are just essentially the same, they have Carapace and Unyielding. Uh, usually with Carapace armor you can still do a little bit of damage, but that shield, it's... A lot of weapons don't, like, they just don't. Like, most things just don't do anything to it. Not even, not even a scratch of damage. And that has a wide arc on it as well. Um, not quite... Well, it might be 90 degree, it might be a little bit more, centering in his body and going out at a pie on either side of his shield forward. So, you have to be, you can't be directly beside him when you're using melee, you have to be a little bit further even, actually. Um, and then that's, when you're, when you're kind of behind the shield at his side a little bit, that's when you can start actually doing some damage to him. He doesn't have anything, any kind of armor on his head, and that is his weak point. But it is hard to hit on the other side of his shield when you get far enough around, and it's hard to shoot through his back, because <laughs> his big chunky shoulders kind of cover his head. So, basically what you want to do here, he's got massive hit mass, uh, he's got really good reduction, so you're going like he he's hard to stagger but once you do you can kind of stagger lock him so if you have aggro just block lead him on a little trail the other teammates can take him out from behind that's just the safest way if it's just you try to find a way to stagger him like maybe grenade maybe an ultimate and uh, then just use your heavy attacks from there your most armor piercing damaging attacks from there so you have the crusher these guys are the tankiest boys in the entire game. Every single square inch of them. Yes, even their bare fingers. I tried. Even the beard strings that aren't in armor. Yeah, I also tried. Every single bit is carapace armor. Okay, so you're not doing any damage. Nothing's doing any damage. You can have an armor-piercing weapon, and you won't proc the blue crosshair, which means you're doing negligible damage. You'll still get through... But when you see the actual damage value, especially in the Cycanum, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. These guys are so tanky. The best way to take care of these guys is a head popper. Honestly, the best way to take care of most enemies is, uh, the, or, 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 or the most, one of the most reliable ways, I should say, is, is a head popper. You're almost always going to do a lot of guaranteed damage, just because of the lock-on and the big chunk of spike damage. So, these guys, when they, when they start getting at you they're gonna throw some massive two-hand attacks that do so much damage the best thing to do here is to just dodge get out of there get the heck out stay away and this is assuming that you don't have a psyker to head pop or a veteran to use crazy armor piercing and just get some awesome headshots so we're moving out of uh, the Ogren and back into the last couple special units. This one's a mutant charger. Uh, he's pretty scary. He's like Bane on steroids, like literally, if, especially if you look at him, like right there, you can see all those vials. This guy is Bane's like source material. That's where he came from. Okay. Uh, so if you look at the diagram, he's all mutant. Every single bit of him is mutant. Um, he's a Rager special, mutant maniac. Weapon type is melee charge, grab, and throw. So he's essentially going to yell and scream and stomp as an audio cue. And then visually you will see him charging. He's massive. And uh, when he gets close to you, he's going to grab you. He's going to throw you into the ground a bunch. And then he's going to 
like yeet us delete us you across the map if you hopefully you land on some actual ground and not get tossed off a ledge because <laughs> that that happens that's not fun <laughs> so um essentially he's got 2000 stagger resistance which is huge obviously and a hit mass of two weak weak spot is his head um yeah that's there's not a lot you can do he gets to you very fast you're going to want to just have the team help um when you hear him yelling it's not going to be long till he gets there so uh try to be conscientious make some room if you have a horde try to prepare for his landing because he's going to make a splash all right he's got a massive left arm you know what he was doing in covid you know he's left-handed he's going to try to grab you with it right so while he's charging at you he's just running running like that arnold schwarzenegger meme right and when he gets close enough and he's going to go do the grab, you kind of see his left arm do something out of character of the normal cadence of his run, which is something you'll get used to eventually, right? So uh, easiest thing right now to say is when you kind of see him go to start reaching, that's when you want to dodge to the left, to your left, to his right, because his right arm is smaller. He tries to grab you with his left. It has a way higher hitbox over there, in my experience. And uh, the proper time to dodge this guy felt a lot uh, different <laughs> than, than what it actually is like I, I was dodging way too late way too late you guys yeah it's I would suggest dodging a little bit earlier than you would usually feel comfortable maybe I'm weird maybe maybe it's normal for you guys but as soon as he starts to go do that grab that's ideally when you want to dodge and then he's just gonna freight train into the wall behind you or or just kind of stop after a little bit and kind of have to hard turn around but he turns like a fridge so as long as you nail that dodge then you have plenty of time to get all the smacks in on them you can you can just lay into them okay let's go we have the last special that i'm going to cover today the last special that we have available uh it's the pox burster this guy's pretty gross he has a very low health pool compared to the rest but he does a lot of damage this is a lonely boy he got cooped up way too hard during covid he's he just wants a hug a little bit too hard though sometimes and what i mean by that is he is going to self-destruct when he gets close to you he's just going to blow up do a whole bunch of damage uh, sometimes he will even get caught on certain things and blow up on his own and nobody will have to worry about him <laughs> without even having to interact with him uh, so he's going to give out an audio cue it's one of the most distinct out of everything in the game it's a it's a very audible ticking sound like a bomb it's going to increase in pace the closer he gets and it will slow down the further you get from him visually he's got a red glow a uh, very weird silhouette to him compared to everything else, and he's going to be running at you. Uh, weak spot is his head. He's got a hit mass of 2.5, stagger resistance of 2, and a reduction of 15. His behavior is to rush straight to you and explode. Uh, so the win here is to disrupt his charge and uh, or kill him before he gets to you, obviously. Uh, so yeah, if you can just shoot him, boom, done, game over, easy peasy. You can turn back around and get back to it, right? But if you don't have an option to do that or not fast enough, then he's going to run at you until he's about, I don't know, maybe six feet away from you. And then at that moment, quite similar to the charger, he's going to do a different animation from his charge and he's going to kind of jump at you at that very second is when you want to push. I have live examples of this in the in-depth video uh, series probably that I'll be coming out uh, regarding all of this. You'll be able to see it there. Um, until then, practice. No, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Until then, too bad. No. <laughs> uh, so when when he starts his jump, that's when you either want to use the uh, the psychers push, or uh, the the ultimate, or or push yourself. And uh, then you'll knock him back far enough, hopefully that you have enough time to dodge backwards before the explosion goes off. And if the explosion doesn't go off when you pushed him, he'll fall back on his back, and that gives you plenty enough time to take him out with a ranged weapon or have another teammate help you out there. So now we're getting into the monsters. We only have a very few left, you guys. Uh, so the first monster here that we have is the Plague Ogren. This is a massive monster. It's the tallest one we have right now. 
uh, the health pools here get get huge okay so the sedition 10,400 health damnation is 32,000 that's insane so unit type monster as you can see on the diagram it's all unyielding all of them is unyielding he's only melee um, visually you're gonna see him bust out of a wall sometimes or just come running at you He's got a character call out. Uh, your team is going to yell, oh no, Plague Ogren. He is going to yell this monstrous roar, and then you're going to hear some really heavy stomping. It'll be very clear when he comes at you. So his attacks are melee. He has a charge. That's about it. Uh, they're very telegraphable. He's very similar to the Chaos spawn in in uh, Vermintide 2. So if you're looking to animation lock any of the monsters available in Darktide, this is going to be your best bet. He has a few different attacks. He has like a hand tentacle that he'll like do a long range kind of swipe three times. He's got a big stomp that's a little AoE. It's easy to dodge. And then he's got a couple, he's got an upper hand, uh, an uppercut smack, and then an overhand down smack. And that is it. That's it. That's it. You can dodge those pretty easily outside of the charge. Um, he's a, he's a wide body, a wide hitbox, so you might need a couple dodges to get out of the way. Um, so essentially, he has a weak spot. That's his head. Whoever has aggro, just block, dodge, noodle around, you know, whatever. Drop levels so that he has to run around to catch up to you or change aggro, whatever. Whoever doesn't have aggro, lay into him. He's a big damage soak, but that's just the best way. Head pop, head target, all that, okay? Uh, the Tox Ogren is another monster that we might have, another enemy that we might have soon. Uh, word is that this boy is going to show up at some point. He's spewing attacks, so I think he's going to be like the equivalent of the, uh, the flamethrower Rat Ogre from Vermintide. Okay, we have the Beast of Nurgle. My favorite, my absolute favorite. You know all about it. I have some uh, visual audio cues here for you. A little bit different, a little bit different than the Plague Ogren. The Ogren's is a little bit deeper, and this thing will kind of yell twice, whereas the Ogren will just yell once and then stomp. This thing will kind of yell a couple times. Oh, I love it. It's so So how you want to encounter these guys, uh, they're they're relatively slow. If you can find a big space to run circles around a center object, they're going to get kind of caught on that center object, and you can just kind of play Ring Around the Rosie with them. Otherwise, uh, you want to have whoever's taking aggro to just kind of keep it, and then everybody else on the team gets behind, because you see that yellow pustule? That's the weak spot right there. Go ham on that puppy, and you'll, uh, you'll grind that guy down real fast, real, real fast. Nice. Some other tips for the Beast of Nurgle are when your teammate has been consumed, they are going to generate, they're going to build up corruption, okay? So you want to get them out of that belly, you want to get them out of that acid, it's not nice to be in, okay? So damage the weak spot on the back or just do enough overall damage to it, he'll spit your teammate out. Avoid the puke, if, the, if you walk into that puke it's going to slow you down, it's going to build up corruption, and watch out for that tail smack. So if you can find a nice piece of um, object or equipment to kind of climb on and get a nice little vantage point, then yeah, it's not bad. But anyway, just I'll just let you enjoy watching the rest of this beautiful beastie boy just blow up. All right, the demon host. This is the newest monster to the party. This guy came out just a few days ago, just a few days before release. Uh, basically, you're going to see him when everything goes pitch black. I, I, I swear, I've seen him a couple times, a couple times, despite them not being dark matches or they're not being those modifiers active. So keep an eye out for that. I think he still can. I don't know if it's a bug or if he's able to just show up very seldomly or, or if it's really only meant to be in the, the dark matches without power. So, let's take a look at his monster card. 
Uh, he has 8450 for health and sedition and 26,000 health and damnation. That's pretty crazy. He's a monster unit type. He's resistant. We know about that. And also witch, the only character in the game that has that witch armor type. Don't know much about it, but uh, I'm assuming that it's going to be a power versus kind of thing that you'll see in your weapons. Or something to the similar effect. Weapon type, he's melee. He's just going to kind of uh, suck your soul through his hand energy while he floats up in the air. And uh, if you go down, yeah, oh yeah, he's going to use that on you until you're fully corrupted up and then you just pop die. If he kills two people on the team, he teleports the heck out of there. And uh, and then he just comes back later full health, which is not nice. It's not. It's not nice. But he's all, he has also got claw swipe attacks, and uh, they also inflict corruption. So be careful with that. Weak spot is his head. Hit mass 100. So the best way to deal with this guy, the absolute best way to deal with this guy, is uh, just get an ogren with a tower shield. <laughs> as you as you see here, we saw him. We're prepared. We're ready. We're going for it. We have a bunch of corruption. We don't care. We know what's up. Ogren takes the takes the pressure. Took a couple hits, which was a little a little concerning, but he got aggro now and he's in a good spot. Put the shield down. Even though that guy's coming at him from the side, he's not taking nothing. Not even corruption. Look at that. Look at that. The rest of the team is just unloading on this guy. Easy peasy. Safe. GG. Thanks for coming. Really, really cool monster, though. Really cool monster. I'm really happy to see a Nurgle or Chaos guy in these games that isn't, like, you know, typical Nurgle stereotype. <laughs> Here is the last one. Holy smokes. The Scab Captain. So this guy you're going to encounter at the end of your assassination missions. He's got a plethora of different weapons he has access to, but the same, the, every single time you can guarantee it's going to be a melee and a ranged, and he's got to have his Void Shield. He's covered in Flak Armor, so once you drop the Void Shield, you're going to need something to deal with the Flak Armor. Uh, the Void Shield is very nasty. You're going to get negligible effect on it uh, with ranged. The, the recommended route is melee. Uh, his shield does blow up. Uh, when it runs, it runs out, pushes everybody away, gets rid of your toughness. It doesn't do too much else, but uh, that's when he's most vulnerable. You get that shield down, you hop on him with the team. If you have a chain sword, rev that thing and then lay into him. It's brutal. It's beautiful. Uh, Psyker head popper, amazing for this job. So let's look at the card here. Uh, sedition, 10,400 health. Damnation, 32,000. And I have no idea if that includes the shield. There's no way it can include the shield because the shield can regenerate. And I think that's crazy. So he's way tankier. If you, if you let go on the gas with him, then his shield will just kind of regenerate over time. Even if only one person is doing damage, which is brutal. So he's the captain unit type. Uh, he's flak armored and void shield. He's melee and ranged. Sometimes you see a big two-handed club, sometimes you'll see a uh, shotgun, sometimes you see a plasma pistol. Visual, it's very clear. Very clear, it's the boss event. He's got the big shiny shield. He yells at you a bunch. All right, you guys, that, uh, that wraps everything up. That is every single bit of information that I had to share. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for coming back. Thank you if you just checked it out for a bit. Any bit of interaction helps. It moves mountains for me. And also, if you uh, want to smash that like button, like it spanked your mom at the market, I wouldn't mind that at all. I wouldn't mind that at all. I wouldn't mind to subscribe either. But uh, hey, you know, you do what you got to do. Thanks for coming, y'all. Love you. Bye-bye.